Joining me today for Face to Face is head coach for the Taekwondo team, Tom Churchis. How you doing today? Pretty good. Thanks for having me. No problem. Let's get right into it. You guys, Taekwondo is, is a you know up and coming sport here on campus, but Rewind, rewinding back, how did you get into, you know, just becoming the head Taekwondo to coach here at Liberty? Uh, five years ago, a friend of mine uh, that I work with is a, a fellow police officer, uh, Jesse Wilson. Uh, he actually started as the head coach here. And a few months into it, he contacted me and he said, hey, Tom, he says, uh, I know you've been in martial arts your whole life because we've talked about it before. He said, I've been doing this thing for the past few months, running the Taekwondo team at Liberty. And, of course, I was kind of surprised saying, oh, I didn't even know they had one. Uh, and he said, yeah, he said, but it's just, it's just a lot to it. Uh, and I think having somebody else there that's experienced would, would really help things out. And that pretty much got me into it. I became his assistant coach at that point. Uh, I did that for three years. And then he, uh, due to health reasons, had to step away from the program. And I decided just to stick with it. And this is my second year now as the head coach. And in those two years, how has, you know, the team just grown? And how do you see the, the team growing in future years? We're, we're it's... It's a process, okay. uh, but we've really, we've really had seen great growth. Uh, for instance, this year we're up to 26 team members. Okay. Uh, that's the largest team we've had so far. Uh, we are beginning to have people uh, stay with the team okay. year after year after year, which really helps with the growth and development because it's a sport that it's, it's so many nuances and, and as much as it's, you're just two people out there fighting is what people think, it really is a technical sport. It takes a lot of time to develop those technical skills. So I actually have two graduate students on the team this year because they're allowed by our, our, our major league, the NCTA, the National Collegiate Taekwondo Association. Okay. They can actually compete up till 28 years old as long as they're still in school. Nice. And you're in the, well, Taekwondo, it, it requires a lot of self-defense. And you teach a lot of self-defense classes. You're a police officer. So how do you tie all of that into each other when it comes to, you know, teaching uh, your athletes as, as well as teaching the community how to, you know, defend themselves? Well, luckily, I really don't have to do a lot with that myself personally as far as being able to tie it all together. Okay. Uh, the idea of Taekwondo and, and most martial arts, uh, even though Taekwondo that we do here, the Olympic style sparring, which is our main focus in competing, uh, you still, we still have to run a Taekwondo program. Okay. So we have a, a belt structure in place for uh, almost universal, although there are sometimes some very small variations. Um, and part of all of the curriculum is self-defense. What, okay. what good would it be to be a great uh, fighter in the ring yeah. and be able to earn points and win medals, but in a self-defense situation, you have absolutely no ability whatsoever. It would be kind of kind of crazy. Yeah. So it does actually kind of all build together, even though it's two very different things. And just expounding more on the self-defense aspect, what do you what do you want to teach? Like, what's your passion in teaching? You know, self defense outside of Taekwondo. I just love the, the idea of self defense. Being a police officer, obviously, I've I've, I've responded to some some pretty disheartening scenes, and and had to take uh, being the initial officer on the scene, take some reports of sexual assaults, rapes, things of that nature, and it's 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 heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. It really does uh, literally break your heart to to see someone going through this this trauma and and uh, having to endure everything they've endured. Um, you know, if, if I had my absolute control over it, self-defense would be a required element in school starting sixth grade on. You would start both men and women. Uh, and then of course it would specialize breaking off as, as far as some of the special specific things you need to learn. Because mm -hmm. defending yourself here as a man can be very different defending yourself as a woman. Uh, although a lot of techniques cross over there's a lot of different things and nuances. Once again, we talk about nuances and specialties. Um, you can learn some very basic stuff that can be helpful, but the more you know, the better your chances of getting away from an attacker. So, and that takes repetition and, and doing things over and over. It takes practice. Very hard to simulate in an hour and a half seminar, but we feel like when we do those seminars, we are at least getting some basic information into their hands, giving them, we call it tools in the toolbox. Uh, something that they can rely on if something ever does happen. Nice. And with Liberty being a Christian school and you teach in Taekwondo, how has how does that help you encourage and build the faith of your you know your athletes? Well, and and that's that's another thing. Like I said, it's it, I don't have to do a lot with that. Martial arts, the very essence of martial arts is develop of of everything: body, spirit, 
and mine. Okay. And of course, as a Christian, your spirit essence is Jesus Christ. Yes. So we, uh, and of course, being liberty, we, we, we don't have to hide that. We're not ashamed of it. As a matter of fact, it's the cornerstone of who we are. So we're very proud of that when we travel, we get together. We love to watch the teams. They have these wonderful chants that are often <laughs> all about, you know, whatever their team is, and they sound really cool. We have a prayer circle, and we get together, and we pray, and it's not about, oh, dear Lord, let us yeah. kick some butt today and win some gold medals. <laughs> yeah. It's keep everyone safe. Let us have a fun time. Let, this, let the spirit of, of competition rule today, and, and, and let's just be safe. Uh, so that's, that's a lot of fun, and uh, the athletes, of course, being from Liberty, I think they love that aspect of it too. And like you said, the, a the athletes, they say, hey, we're from Liberty, but that doesn't mean we're soft. So right. just talking more on the sports aspect, nationals are coming up. Yes. So what are you most expecting, you know, just out of the team this year, into San Diego this year, correct? Yes, okay. San Diego, we're going to San Diego. Uh, so unfortunately, we won't be able to take the whole team this okay. year. We are, we're only gonna be able to take a portion of the team. Uh, and right now they're basically competing for those spots. They're, they're basically all open. Uh, I do expect uh, we have Takia Henderson on the team. Mm -hmm. She is a, a former national champion. She had a bad run last year uh, where she just unfortunately, uh, she, she's gotten so good to the point where even though she's in a, a, a colored rank class, in other words, she's not a black belt. Mm -hmm. uh, if she had been in a black belt division, she would have been a repeat champ. Okay. But she made head contact with a competitor and knock them out, which is not okay if you're a colored belt competitor. So if you're yellow, green, blue, red, uh, you can't knock out your opponent. Whereas in the black belt division, that's, that's fully legal. Uh, and that's what happened to her last year. She delivered a kick that the person actually kind of slid into and it knocked them out. Well, she, I don't think she ever went completely unconscious, but it was considered a TKO uh, and that got her disqualified. So I really am hoping to be able to take her this year because uh, I, I feel certain she'll, she'll bring home another championship for us. And I have some other promising members on the team that have been to nationals before and have medaled, and, and I surely expect another strong showing from them. Nice. And lastly, you talked about it being your first two years. It's a process to get to where you want to go. So where do you see the Taekwond, Taekwondo team you know, years from now? I, I see it just continue to grow. Uh, as long as our membership continues to grow, and I think that's, that's almost a foregone conclusion right now because once we have a, a nice core group of people that, that love it as much as, as I do coaching it, yeah. uh, it just becomes a, a spirit and they go back and they talk about it. And when people see them leaving to go to practice, they, people might not even know we have a team and they go, oh yeah, I'm going to Taekwondo, but what's that? And, and it just spreads. And that's a really how our team has grown more than anything else is word of mouth. Mm -hmm. We have people that have shared dorm rooms with other people or quad mates. And that's how they come in because they see their, do their, their person in the dorm or the person in the quad coming to practice every night and they're like, well, where did you go, you know, all every, every day during the week? I just, you know, I'd really like to know more about it. And then they come in, they check out a practice, they're like, oh, I want to do that. Uh, our joke, being a police officer, is the only place you can actually come assault another person and <laughs> not get arrested. Uh, now, of course, <laughs> that's all in, in good fun, yeah. uh, but it, it's also a little truth to it. You, you really get to get in the ring and, and uh, get to hit and kick and and have a lot of fun with it. Nice. Well, Tom, thank you for your time today. It was great talking to you. For Tom, I'm Gabe Henderson for Face to Face.